What's up everybody, Brandon Johnson here again and thanks for joining. Today we're taking a look at the classic old time tune, Texas Gales. And for this lesson I wanted to look at two separate versions from two of my all time favorite pickers, Norman Blake and Tony Rice. And I wanted to highlight the differences and the similarities that these two great pickers share when they approach a classic fiddle tune like Texas Gales. And this song was featured on the album Blake and Rice, which is really a, an incredible collaboration, you know, which really showcases not just their chops, but also the really, really distinct character of each of their instruments as well. They, they're both playing their Martin guitars that they're really known for. At that time, Tony Rice hadn't yet got his, uh, his custom-made Santa Cruz Tony Rice model guitar. He was still using the, the one, the, the Holy Grail Martin, that he got from Clarence White. And Norman Blake on that album was playing the the Martin that Tony Rice said was the most beautiful guitar he had ever heard. So when you put these two pickers together with, with their iconic Martins, the Blake and Rice is truly a, a iconic album and something that I think acoustic guitarists can learn a ton from. And the first version we're gonna look at here is the Norman Blake version. We're gonna go through the entire melody note for note. And then we're also gonna look at the Tony Rice version note for note as well, and really take a deep dive into the notes and the techniques and the things that make these two incredible pickers distinct and give their playing so much character. So I hope you enjoy this one, and let's check it out. All right, let's take a look at measure number one here. So we see this three note pickup at the beginning here. And what's really cool about this melody is it's sort of, you know, Norman Blake's take on the Texas Gale melody, which is, which is very unique, and it uses a lot of what I would consider to be like signature Norman Blake intervals here. And we're gonna start with three downstrokes for this pickup. So we're gonna go downstroke on the open G, downstroke on the second fret G, and then downstroke on the open B. So we're playing this out of the C position. So it makes sense that the very first note of the first measure is gonna be first fret B, which is the root note of this key of C, which is the key that we're in. Okay, and then we have another first fret B on an upstroke now. So we had four downstrokes in a row followed by that, that one upstroke, and that's gonna kind of start our alternating picking here. And you'll notice on that pickup, I'm going open to middle finger on second fret G, to open B, and then the index finger on that first fret B. And that's because that's just the natural kind of position for the C chord, which is why I use my index finger there. Okay, and then from there we have open B, first fret B, third fret B, to open B. And we're gonna land, or we're gonna resolve back on that first fret B again. Okay, 
And that first fret B there on that downstroke, that's going to be on an eighth note. And that's kind of a, a signature part of the melody right there, where there's that brief pause. And then we're going to play second fret G on an upstroke with our middle finger to open G. Okay, and then from there, with our ring finger now, we're going to play 3rd fret D to 2nd fret D on a downstroke, back to 3rd fret D. Those are just kind of some standard intervals out of the C major scale in the open position. Okay, and that's going to lead us into measure number 2. Okay, looking at measure number two now, we're starting out with an eighth note here over the open G, followed by an upstroke on the first fret B again, on an eighth note as well. So there's a little bit of space there. And then we're going to go into the exact same interval that we had in the middle of measure number one. So open B, first fret B, third fret B, to open B, and then back to first fret B. So it's really about the the kind of the notes we're not playing in this section here. Okay, and that first fret B there, that's going to be on an eighth note, so there's a slight gap before we get to that open G on an upstroke. And you really want to focus on your picking being really light and even. And you'll see a rest there at the end, so we'll just kind of let that measure finish out with a rest. So let's play measures one and two now, all the way through to the metronome. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, and that leads us into measure number three. Okay, when we look at measure number three now, you'll see that this measure is, is nearly identical to measure number one, with the exception of one note, and that's that open G there. And you'll notice that in both the Tony Rice and the Norman Blake versions, they both kind of do this. And what they do is they just kind of let that G string just kind of ring out over that first fret B that we're playing with our index finger here. And that's just another way to add a little bit of dynamics to, to the melody itself. So again, it's exactly the same as measure number one. We're just going to play that G over that first fret B and the rest of it's going to be played exactly the same. And we're going to end on that third fret D on an upstroke again. Okay, and that's going to lead us into measure number four. Okay, so looking at measure number four now, this is, this is something that you'll hear in Norman Blake's playing in other songs as well, but he really likes to use this kind of, this fourth fret G interval a lot, and he likes to riff off of the fourth fret G to the second fret G, kind of using this little, like this little two note chord shape, even though we're not really necessarily articulating every note out of that. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start on a downstroke on an open G. And you'll notice that I'm kind of still planting here on, on this first fret B, just to keep myself anchored. And then you'll see another downstroke on the open G, followed by an upstroke on the open G. So you're going to have three open Gs, the first one on an eighth note, then the second two on a sixteenth note, to open, to fourth fret G, to open. And what you can do there is you can play, you know, basically like I have it written here, just the individual notes. 
Or what you can actually do, and what Norman generally does, is he'll actually articulate that little diatonic chord. So he'll play like that. So you know that that's kind of another way to do it if you want to add a little bit, a little bit of extra complexity in there. You can kind of do it that way. Or you can just do the individual notes as well. And right when we hit that upstroke on that open G, there's a quick downstroke back on that first fret B, and then we're going to descend. So we're going to play first fret B, sec second fret G to open, and then second fret D to third fret A. That's going to be your root note. Essentially, we're just kind of descending down this C chord shape here. In, in really a classical kind of way. So let's play measures three and four now, all the way through to the metronome. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. All right, now let's play the A part, start to finish. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Thanks for checking out this lesson today. Head on over to my website, brandonjohnsonguitar.com. I also offer an all-access membership where you can get access to every single lesson that I've ever made. So head on over to the website and check it out. We'll see you there. Yeah.